<sighs> We're gonna attempt to mold it. God, I hope this works. All right, so we already went over how to make the sword. Now I'm gonna show you how I made the matching shield. As you saw in the sword tutorial, I'm using that same sheet of plexiglass to cut out the shape of the shield. I'm just using this large serving tray. I found it, it was a good size of a circle. I traced the shape down on the plexiglass and then made it two inches wider all around. To cut out this rounded shape, I'm using a handheld grinder. This worked actually really well. The plexiglass didn't split or crack because the grinder got so hot, it kind of melted the plastic and kept it all in a nice circular shape. So just work little by little until you have the entire shield cut out. So now we need to mold it. <laughs> this is gonna be bad. So I'm gonna mold it over that same serving platter thing that I used to make the inner shape. Um, it's not round, it kind of has a lip but then is flat. It's not perfect, but it's the closest thing I have, so that's just what we're gonna do. And then, I don't know how this is gonna go. I don't, I don't know what's gonna happen. So remember this has protective film over the whole thing, so make sure you take both sides off. But we're gonna try, we're gonna try, we're gonna try right now. Now before I committed to molding the entire shield, make sure you do a test piece over your mold. Ideally, you should be molding over metal, anything that's not going to burn when you put a hot plastic over it. Honestly, one of those metal saucers for like snow would give you the perfect shape, but I live in Southern California and they are hella expensive here because it doesn't snow. So I didn't wanna pay $50 for a saucer, so I ended up just using this serving tray, which worked fine. But if you have access to metal saucers, I highly recommend you do that. It would give you a really nice shape. So I have learned greatly after making this shield and I'm gonna give you a little bit of advice. So what I did was put my cut piece of plexiglass into the oven on top of my metal heating tray. Again, if you're worried about toxic fumes, I would not recommend doing this. Heating up any sort of plastic, whether it's in the oven or with a heat gun, does release toxic fumes. But again, I rarely use my oven for cooking, so I wasn't worried about it. Putting it in the oven is how I got this basic shape, and you can see my oven was actually too hot, and that's why it got all bubbly on one side. If you do not want to put yours in the oven, that is okay. I found out that using a heat gun works pretty okay. It just takes a lot longer. So as you can see, my serving dish that I'm molding it over has these flat areas, so I need to reheat these areas to make them round. So just taking my heat gun on a very high setting, it took forever, just let the plastic heat up and melt over the metal shape. So you can use this technique for the entire shield without putting it in the oven, it just takes a really long time. Once I was happy with the curved shape, I went ahead and trimmed the edge of the shield down by an inch all the way around the circumference. Now we need to make handles for the shield so it stays on your arm. So for the shield, I really wanted it to look like it was floating on my arm, just like it does in the cartoon. So in order to make it look invisible from both the front and the back, I decided to use plexiglass to make armbands. Taking strips of the plexiglass, I just cut out about one inch wide at any length because you're going to have to trim it down depending on the size and thickness of your arm. Using a heat gun, I heated up the strips and be careful not to burn yourself. I laid this over my arm to get the correct shape. Then being very, very careful, reheat about an inch of the end and then push it down flat so you're gonna have a arch shape that you're gonna be able to glue onto the back side of the shield. Repeat this process with a smaller band that you're gonna be able to slip your hand into. Now to color the shield, I'm using that same tinted spray paint that I used to paint the sword. And it's gonna be difficult to get this much surface area super even, so take your time and just add thin layers to slowly build up the color. I also taped off an inch of the edge because it needs to be a mint green. I thought I was gonna paint it, but I didn't end up painting it. But if you find a translucent mint green spray paint and wanna end up spraying the edges, you need to tape it off. Now the shape and color is done, we're gonna go on to adding glitter! Everyone's favorite. So I'm using the same method that I used for the sword. I have large pink stars and small pink stars that I'm gonna add in later by hand. But for the resin, you just wanna mix up a big batch and it has clear iridescent glitter, clear iridescent star glitter, and there is no dye or color in it at all. It's actually just a pink iridescent glitter that's giving it that color. Mix that up and then pour it all over the shield. 
Now the trick is to really kick the resin kind of hot so that way it cures faster. I didn't and it ended up really running off the sides a lot. So you can see as I'm placing the bigger stars in by hand, they're running off the lip of the shield. But it's okay, it all worked out, it looked fine in the end. But if you add more catalyst to the resin, it will kick faster and thus not run off the sides as much. Let your glittery masterpiece cure overnight and we're gonna move on to making the vine shape that decorates the front of the shield. I did this out of thermoplastic. Again, I'm using Thibra, but any thermoplastic will work. I heated it up and rolled it out into really long worms and then just shaped it in a general spiral pattern. Again, I was going for a more natural look, so I ended up twisting and overlapping some of the vines. Make sure everything looks good on the shield, and before you glue them down, you can go ahead and paint them. So using a reference photo for colors, go ahead and mix up a light pink and paint your vines. And I did this just with acrylic paint. For additional decorations, I am gluing faux roses onto the shield, kind of like how I decorated the sword. So this one big pink rose is gonna go in the middle, and then the other smaller ones are gonna decorate the vines. Once everything is dry, go ahead and start assembling your shield until it looks the way you want it to. I'm using just plain super glue, my favorite geotube by Loctite, to glue the vines on top of the shield set something heavy and flat over the top so they don't move as they're drying. To make sure that the handles glue really securely onto the shield, sand down and rough up the surface of both the handle and the place on the shield that you're gonna be gluing it to. Play around with it and make sure the spacing of the handles is gonna look right when you glue them down. I am using that same Loctite super glue to attach the handles onto the shield, but I will suggest to buy a two-part epoxy. It will give you a much stronger bond. That being said, my shield did handle all day at a convention and the handles did not fall off. Let the handles dry completely before flipping it back over and I'm going to be adding the rest of the decorations to the vine. I took a piece of plain craft foam, painted it a really light pink, and then cut it up to make the thorns. Using super glue, I just placed these all around the vines along with those little faux roses. Now it's time to do the outer edge of the sword. So in the cartoon, the entire shield is translucent and the edge is a mint green. I could not find a translucent tinted mint green spray paint, so my second choice was actually to put flowers on the edge that I found in a mint green. I thought this added with the natural and floral look I was going for and I rather liked the outcome. So I individually picked off these petals or leaves, whatever you wanna call them, and then just glued them around the edge of the sword and then repeat the gluing process until the tire edge is covered. Now, because of the shape of the leaves, it left little gaps on the back end, which I ended up just covering with some pearls with hot glue. Um, these did not hold very well. They ended up falling off all conventions, so I don't recommend doing this, but it did look really pretty in the end. And thus completes my translucent, glittery, rose quartz slash Stevani slash Steven Universe shield. So that is it for this tutorial. I am so happy with how it turned out. It really looks like it is levitating on my arm, which is the exact look I was going for. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you like cosplay and Steven Universe content, and I will see you next time. Bye. Apparently I'm just gonna wait for my glue gun to get hotter because it's not ready yet.